Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. It must be Monday because we are here in the Jaygood Village, Sierra at the Bottom, a free community where we teach anyone, and we mean anyone, the basics of, basics of how to travel anywhere in the world for free. And today we have one of our fancy guests. Hi, Anthony, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm not called fancy very often, so thanks. Hey, it's, you know, <laughs> you need to be called that often, more often for sure. All right, so he is actually one of our expert coaches that uh, we can you can set up a call with Anthony, which you'll probably put your little call to action in there too. But you agreed to come on today and talk to us about earning multipliers. He has a lot to say. Let's pull up some comments first, and then we're going to get into it. So we'll do a little comments and housekeeping. Of course, Brooke from above is here. Hi, Brooke. Hey, Brooke. She keeps us on the straight and narrow. I say that every week. And I'd love to know where you're from, where you'd like to travel. We will have questions, but we're going to keep them till at the end because Anthony has so much to tell us. Look at uh, all of our lounge members are tuning in. Hi, Mira. How are you? Yep. Uh, and if you do not know about the lounge, let's talk about that just real quickly for one second. So you are in the village right now. So you get a ton of great information for free. The J Goot Lounge is guaranteed strategies to travel and luxury for budget prices. So you can text your name and to the number 720-706-7999 for information and a free coaching call. And you can get someone like Anthony who's gonna learn you really well. <laughs> but we had our, I think this is our fourth lounge uh, retreat this past weekend. So you'll see a lot of our loungers are gonna pop in here. Uh, the other thing is you'll know that we do answer, uh, we're going to answer questions at the end. We have a lot of the experts that are in the audience, so they'll be answering your questions too, which is great. And now I see that there's a lot of people that we can't see their names. So let me throw this little call to action. You can go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and give them your permission to, so we can see your comments and so that it can look like this. Hi, Kate. That's one of our lounge members. Sadly, not at Playa, but we're happy that you're here. Hey, Tracy is here. She says she wants to go to Dubai and South Africa. Oof, absolutely. I can highly recommend South Africa and I've had friends that have gone to Dubai. Have you been there yet, Anthony? I have not. Not yet. Not on your, oh, somebody says they have a time set up with you on Saturday. So, hey, looking right? forward to it. That's awesome. And then, yes, Danville, Delaware. And again, I'll pull this up one more time. Go to StreamYard.com forward slash slash Facebook and you can give permission for us to see your name and that way we can see the comments. We will have a giveaway at the end. It'll be a $100 travel savings card and that's going to be a random commenter. So the more that you comment, the better chance you have to win. So, all right, enough of this. You ready? Uh, well, I'm, I'm almost ready. You asked some great questions like what's your name and where are you from? Yep. The really big question now that we know who's in it, who are you rooting for in the big game? I'm sorry, what game is that? <laughs> <laughs> well you can't the, the term is trademark so the the big game coming up in a couple of weeks uh so. there's a there's a little skit where they talk about the they got invited to a superb owl party there you go realize it's a super super bowl party so there, there you, you go, go. <laughs> and i live in denver so you can see that's what yeah kate what sport <laughs> i think what? someone's talking about your hair actually My yes hair. <laughs> it's definitely definitely my hair <laughs> So I've worked very hard on it. Ah, oh, no, looking good. I like the I like the spiffy hat. Hi, Katie. You are my people as well too. She is one of our <laughs> experts as well too. Uh, we have Santa Clara, South Florida. Michael uh, wants to go to Morocco. I don't blame you. Mm. Take me with you. Uh, Todd is calling in. Hello from Utah. Ah, this is good. This is good stuff. All right, y'all. We are ready to jump in. So again, keep commenting. Talk about where you'd like to go, and we can all talk to each other which is great too. But Anthony is going to talk about earning multipliers, which is, you know, yeah. magic. I love it. And we'll get into kind of some of the, the basics. If you've picked up, Joel's been kind of taking us back to the basics the last couple of weeks. And the reason I asked about the game, that is the, the ultimate classic football line um, uh, from, from years and years ago, back in the 60s, back in my day. Uh, Vince Lombardi, after making it to the Super Bowl and not quite winning the very next year at the beginning of training camp, his players were all set. Hey, let's just finish what we need. We already have all the pieces in place. Let's win the big game this year. He came back to him and held up a football, which I had one right now, mm -hmm. but the line was gentlemen, this is a football. And he took them all the way back to the very basics to the very, very beginning so that they could be a Super Bowl caliber team. 
And that's really kind of what we've been doing the last couple of weeks and what we'll continue to do today, get into just some of the basics so you've got a foundation you can build on to be a Super Bowl team. Let me agree with Brooke on this one. Uh, it's very rare that you can use anything sports related to get me to relate to something. However, <laughs> you have used an excellent analogy uh, that got my attention too. And Brooke is right. Yes, got to go back to the basics. Absolutely. So thank you for that. And the 60s, yep. I think we're we're close in age. I love this. I there can get go. with you on this. All right. I love it. So we'll dive into some of the basics of earning multipliers. And speaking of basics, if you've been following Jaygoo for any length of time, you know we have two rules around here. If you know them, you can drop them in the comments as well. Little uh, no prize pop quiz. Um, <laughs> Just our, but, our undying attention and you know, we're, we'll really dig you for knowing this answer. Virtual high fives. Yes. So mm -hmm. rule number one, if you haven't uh, put it in there yet, if you haven't gotten it yet, rule number one is to check every single day for the best deals you can find and go where the deals are. Works every time. Find a deal, capitalize on the deal. That in and of itself will save you money on your travels and help you to travel more. I just got back from a $38 trip to Atlanta earlier this week. Booked See, solely because we found it. That's the beauty of it too, Anthony, is that that's that curiosity. You're not, you, you've really kind of opened that up. So yeah, 38 bucks just to go out in there and do it. That's actually the best way to get started. Yeah. Absolutely. And then rule number two, which is a little more what we're talking about today. Rule number two, there it is, is to always have a stash of the right kind of points for everything else. Whether it's a, a last minute trip and prices are crazy and you need those points to protect you from bad prices or maybe to do something a little nicer that you don't want to spend real money on. Um, and so that's where we're focused today is that rule number two, earning more and more of those valuable points without changing your spending. Um, and, then, and so last let week- Let me pop this in here. Sorry, Anthony, real quick. So text your name and the words Hail Mary to 720-706-7999. That's going to pair nicely with what Anthony's talking about as well too, because this rule is also great for last minute things or dates that you have to have to be there, a wedding, uh, something you know to do with a loss in your family. These things like that where you can't, either you don't have any flexibility with the date or uh, it's last minute and you really need to have those points. So, yay. Yep. Yeah, those non jegu trips. Yeah. So they're still away. So last week, Joel talked about getting the chase card. So everybody here has their chase card now, has your chase sapphire. We talked about that already. If you haven't seen that one, you can text us for that too. Um, just put chase. I don't think we have a, a pop-up for it or anything, but it was, so I don't, good. but I'm just going to put this number here. So just make sure you put your name in there and either, you know, call me or chase or anything that we talk yeah. about, you can text it to this number. Yeah. But if, if you don't have that chase card yet, you need to go back and watch that training because Joel walked through so clearly why you need that card and why we start with that card. And that's the whole foundation, uh, for rule number two. And so now that you've got that chase card, we're going to talk today about how to earn three to five points for every dollar that you spend on that chase card. You can ramp that up over time for sure, but we're going to focus on the basics today and getting some of those key play, uh, key pieces in place so that you can do that. So you go from one X, one point for every dollar you spend to averaging three to five uh, pretty quickly just by taking advantage of a few things that Chase already offers anyway. And eventually, over time, mastering this strategy, that's how you create this travel slush fund of points that you can dip into for free flights and hotels whenever you want. Uh, just like that $38 trip I just took to Atlanta, uh, after I booked that trip, I finally started looking for hotels and realized, oh, there's apparently a convention going on when we're going to Atlanta. And the hotel we wanted to stay at was $660 a night. I'm not paying $660 a night for a hotel room. And so I had that back stash point and was able to use those just like Joel showed last week at a Hyatt, 8,000 points for a $600 hotel room. I'll do that deal all day long. So, but and I have this up there too. Yes. And I just, you just mentioned travel slush fund. So you can text your name and travel slush fund to 720-706-7999. And that'll go well with what you're going to talk about further. Yep, exactly. So awesome. So we'll get started. We'll dive in. Obviously, step one, now that you've got that chase card, spend everything you can on that chase card as long as it doesn't involve a fee. If there's a fee in order to, to use that card, 
to pay that bill using that card, don't do it. 99% of the time, it's not worth it. And the very few times it might be are more advanced than what we're going to get into right now at this beginner level. And so just make that a blanket rule right now. If there's a fee involved, don't do it. But everything else, every other dollar that you're going to spend on credit cards needs to go on this chase card. Anthony, what would be some examples of something that would charge a fee? Yeah, good question. So something like your mortgage or your rent a lot of times will have a fee, which it sounds like a great way to rack up some points. If you're paying $1,000, $2,000 in, in rent or mortgage or whatever it is, you would think those add up. But if you're paying a 3% fee to be able to do that, well, then you've got to get three cents uh, redemption out of those just to break even before it's even before you even gain anything from it, which as you're starting out, that's that's the peak of what you're looking for. So it's just not a good not a good setup for you. You're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up to cost money instead of earn free travel money here. Yeah, that's so, a really good overall rule, by the way, because there's so many variables. And if you start falling down that rabbit hole, just just stick with this right now. Yep. Just make that a blanket rule for the time being. Yeah. Um, number two, stop worrying about sign up bonuses with other cards. The number of times on a free coaching call or we get a text or asked in the Facebook group, hey, Marriott has a great sign up bonus right now or Hilton has a great sign up bonus or this card or that card. Listen, they pop up all the time. You can see them here and there are all kinds of what we call shiny object offers. And the, the reason we call them shiny objects, it's not meant to, you know, disparage them or disparage you for looking at them or anything like that. But the problem is they take away from what can be much, much more valuable and they distract you and dilute your focus and your spending. We're after it at Jaygoot, the most potential possible with the least amount of, of cards and work and juggling. And so things like this, no matter how good they look on the surface, they aren't worth it. Avoid them. So if you, uh, somebody said they have a call coming up with me on Saturday, if that was one of your questions, you just got your answer. But we'll talk about some other stuff when we connect. So avoid those shiny objects. Stick with your chase card. Number three, with whatever other cards you might have, it's time to move away from those. No more spending a little bit on your Amazon card because it gets 5% back or your Costco card because it gets 3% or whatever other card you might have, they aren't worth it. I've, I've still got, so pre Jaygoot, uh, I've, I've busted it out to show it before, but I've got an old cashback card that, that gets me 6% on groceries. I want you to know, I haven't touched that card in I don't know how long. Uh, chase, chase, chase is the right answer because no matter no matter how high the percentage is, every one of those points I earn is only a penny a point. It's never gonna be more than that. But when I'm using this chase card, I know how to turn those points into three cents, four cents, five cents per point in value on the low end. There's potential for a lot more that no other cashback card or individual airline or hotel card can do. And so you've gotta do the little bit of work to move all of those things over. If you've got, somebody said they've got uh, utilities and that kind of thing auto-drafted with no fees, way to go. Move those over to your chase card. Make sure that every one of those dollars that you're spending is earning you the right kind of points. So we actually have, I think, a training on this one too, our bad points training. Uh, so you can dive into that one and that'll show you exactly why the potential of these chase points versus any of these individual airline and hotel cards or cashback cards or anything like that. So you can do the same thing with that. We'll send it over to you. And I, I do see a note, you know, we, they're a little bit behind on, I guess sometimes the system lags a little bit. So if you don't get it right away, you will definitely get it. So just hang tight. But again, text your name and bad points to 720-706-7999. Let me pull this up as well, too. If you are just now joining, not to worry. Uh, the As soon as this is done, there'll be a replay. So not a big deal. You can just hit replay as soon as we're done. There's a lot going on here. So yep. awesome. Very good. So number four, get to know that Sapphire card or your Chase Business Inc. card 
get to know it inside and out. Know all the little details and the perks and the benefits. Don't leave anything on the table with them. Each one of them, whether it's a sapphire or an ink or whatever the case is, they each have their own little perks. So get to know those. Read the little things and conditions. Learn the benefits. And obviously make sure that you pay it off on time every single month. That's key. Because obviously if you're paying interest and fees, those will eat you alive. They will. It, it, it absolutely undoes what you're talking about here. Um, and I don't know if you're going to dive into it, Anthony, but do you have any other suggestions on how we, we get to know that? Because I know sometimes navigating that is can, for each card can be a little a little too detailed. Yeah, great question. So we'll, we'll jump into a couple of them. But okay. one of the easiest ways is just to go into your Chase account and look at the account benefits. There's actually a button that says benefits that you can click and it will show you some of the different things that you can take advantage of, whether it's little stuff like on the chase sapphire preferred you get a 50 dollars hotel credit every year or a instacart plus membership or, or whatever it is they've got a whole list of them in there we're going to look at a few of them but if you hit card benefits it'll lay out all the different ones for you on that particular card that you got so i love really this good. hack from Kimberly, thank you for this. And everybody, definitely do this. If you, I mean, that's the beauty of having Venmo and you know instant things. You can just say, "Hey, I'll put this on my Amex," and then everybody gives you cash, and that's that. Excellent hack. Smart. Well done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At a Jaygoot meetup, it's a fight between everybody. <laughs> not over a you take the bill. It's I'll take the bill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the everybody wins the points. It's almost like you have to say it first, like, you know, calling dibs on the front yeah. seat when you're a shotgun. kid, you know? Yeah, shotgun. <laughs> exactly. Love it. And then lastly, like we're talking about, go to the Chase site. Look up all of their bonuses and make sure you're taking advantage of them. And like I said, I'll show you a couple of different places you can do that um, as we kind of walk through this. Here's, here's one area right now. Uh, one area you can see what that looks like. Log into your Chase account. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see this little section that says Chase Offers. And it'll look just like that. You'll see the first few. And then right below, there's a little button there that says See All Offers. So you go ahead and click that, and it will open them all up like this. And there are all kinds of different offers in there that you can take advantage of, whether it's these are small, but I think I see Panera and Green Chef and Blue Apron. And I think I see ABC Mouse. My kids use that. I need to get in there and take advantage of that. Oh, that's really cute. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. I keep picking up the bill, but nobody pays me back. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I'll give you some leg breaking tips, just so you know. <laughs> there you go. That's a whole different story. <laughs> that's a whole other. <laughs> so, but look at all of these different offers. And next to each one of them, there's a little plus sign. You just click that and add it to your account. And it's that simple. And any one of those that you use, you'll get the benefit of that. So and Anthony, that's in your dashboard? That's in your Chase dashboard? Yep. As soon as you log in, once you log into your Chase account, you just scroll down to where it says Chase Offers. Awesome. So, and it looks just like this, what you see on the screen. First, just that. You'll see the little square there. And then once you hit see all offers, it will take you to the page that looks like this. Excellent. Where you can see them all. Extra credit, you can see here, they're all automatically added because of that nifty card pointers extension. So card pointers will automatically add them for you every single time they pop up. So you don't have to go in and think, remember to do it, remember to take advantage of it. So since I said ABC mouse, I don't have to go back and add that. I'll already take advantage of it. Let me pop this in here. So card pointers, we have had Emmanuel, who's the founder of this company on our show before. He's presented to the lounge as well. So I believe you can still get a, a good Jaygoot uh, deal with cardpointers.com forward slash Jaygoot. Yeah, absolutely. So that comes in really handy. And there's, if you want to test it out, there's a free version to kind of play around with and get yeah. familiar with it. The yeah. paid version is is has so many more features that'll auto add these uh, offers to your Chase account and your Amex account and all that kind of stuff as well. So it comes in super handy. Excellent. So awesome. 
So everything you spend now goes on your Chase card. We've got that much covered. Not and your I'm debit gonna, card. Not your debit card. Not your debit not card. Your debit card. I'm going to say it several times. Yeah, yeah definitely Thank not you. that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And as, as important, as wonderful as the sign-up bonus is, don't get me wrong, if we're going to get a new card, we want to hit and get that sign-up bonus. It's not about the sign-up bonus over the long haul. The sign-up bonus is nice, but the Jagut way is all about a marathon, not a sprint. You know, we don't want to be, I, I got a sign-up bonus, I burned through the points, and that is the end of my travel. The whole point of this is to make this kind of travel, this level of travel, sustainable and repeatable where you can do it every single year. Hey, and Andy, so what we're I said I wasn't going to do go I wasn't sorry I said I wasn't going to do questions but can we can we pop this in there too like that that this is going to go nicely with what you just said. How how yeah. often do you do you check those? No, that's that's really good. Now me I I check about once a week cuz that's how often I try to keep up on my um on my spending to make sure that I am paying off my card and I didn't forget to put something in my budget because I'm kind of a budget geek. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm checking every week. Um, but with that said, a good rule of thumb, if you're not doing that, good rule of thumb, anytime you're about to spend, say, $50 or more, hop back in there and check for those offers. Uh, and then in just a minute, we'll show you another place to look as well. And so that's a good place. Even if you are checking regularly, get back in there and check again before you spend any significant money. Thank you. So that's a really good question. Yeah, that's how too. So, but the whole idea is learning how to average at least three points for every dollar that you spend. That's part of what makes this sustainable is that we're not just getting one point for every dollar that we spend. And when you learn how to take those points and redeem them for four cents each, which is very possible to do. Joel did it live last week, uh, was looking at some great Hyatt offers where you can get three to five cents. When you do that, when you average earning three points and redeeming them for four cents each, means you're putting 12% of every dollar you spend into your travel slush fund. And so that can add up really, really quickly. And so take that and uh, apply it to your spending. So in, in dollars, that means if, if you're spending, say, 50K a year on credit cards, just with those numbers, you can easily get enough points to pay for $6,000 in free flights and hotels every single year without chasing a new sign-up bonus, without juggling a dozen different cards. That's just on your chase card. Very, very simply. And it seems like this is a replenished kind of system too, Anthony, because I think that's the toughest thing. We all just think that that's this def the definit uh, definitive number that's just going to like stay our finite number that's going to stay that. But this kind of system is spend it, replenish, spend it, replenish. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the whole point. That's what, again, makes it sustainable and, and repeatable. And so that's that's maybe personal spend. If, if you're out there and you've got a business and you're spending, you know, advertising or construction or whatever the case is, and you've got six figures and expenditures every month and you're spending a million dollars a year. That's easily wow. six figures in free flights and hotels every single year from what you're spending anyway. And so the, the key is people get like hung up on that number. Well, I'm not spending a million dollars a year. That's okay. It's not about how much you're spending. How much are you getting back out of what you're spending? Right. I promise you there are people spending a million dollars a year on their business and only getting a penny a point in cash back or worse, they're getting nothing at all. And somebody who masters these strategies, who really dives in and earns as many points as they can with every dollar they spend and maximizes their redemption on those points when and how they use them can do better travel wise than someone spending a whole lot more. So this is the key right here is just making sure that you're earning as many points as possible. And so, so here's the math and you get to decide what this looks like for you with how deep you want to dive into this, how much you want to work and hunt for these deals, earning multipliers, how many points are you earning for every dollar you spend? times redemption multipliers, how much are you getting out of those points when you spend them, pennies per point, equals your credit card ROI, return on investment. And so we start with that first example. You're doing three points earned per dollar and you get four cents per point out of them. 
that's 12% of your spending going back into your pocket. Oh, Every single index. That's a really good point, Brooke. So yeah, yeah exactly maybe you spend, it'll A, it can get you into trouble because uh, there are rules with the credit card company uh, against it. Um, but B, again, you're complicating the process when this organically can be very, very profitable and very useful to begin with. So like I said, with this, 3X and 4X gets you 12% back in free travel. If you up it to five, just a little bit more on both sides, five points earned for every dollar you spent, five cents in redemption value every time you use them, that's a quarter for every dollar you spend. 25% of your spending goes back into your pocket in the form of free flights and hotels. Up it a little bit more. And these are, these are real numbers. Average seven points for every dollar you spend. Redeem them for seven cents. That's 49%. You're getting about half of your spending back into your pocket for every single dollar you spend repeatedly without juggling a whole bunch of different cards. So keep it simple. I'm going to pop this up here too. Joel recently came up with the handiest, dandiest Excel spreadsheet, which is, I mean, that's that's a love language for me, right? It's a good spreadsheet. <laughs> and so if you text your name and calculator to 720-706-7999, or you can go directly to jgoot.com forward slash calculator, you'll see a very fun, easy way to plug these numbers in and, and figure out exactly what Anthony's talking about. Yep. Yeah, and it'll help you decide whether what you're about to do is a good use of your points or not. Um, yeah. And depending on what pops up, Joel makes it pretty clear whether it's a good use or not. <laughs> yeah, there's a little algorithm that'll that'll let you know. Uh, add a add a person or uh, ooh, that sucks. <laughs> <Pretty clear. laughs> it's quite I entertaining, it. actually. So. It really is. It's worth just getting in there and playing around with it, even before you have a redemption <laughs> to calculate. Right. So. But here, the, the whole point is you can you can get as much free travel as you want. You've just got to know where to look and do the hunting, do the digging to find those earning multipliers. We've shown you a couple of spots already. We're going to keep moving forward. And then also how to take advantage of uh, those redemption multipliers and finding better uses of your points. This 12 percent that we're talking about, this is remember we're this is a football. We're back to the beginning, back to the basics here. This is child's play. Once you start to look and learn how to find these kind of deals, it is entirely possible to put 25 to 50% of your spending back into your pocket every single year. Some people really go all in and, and choose to obsess over this fun little hobby. And you can put 100% or more of your spending back into your pocket in the form of free travel. I so, like how you have legally in, in big block letters. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. there are there are illegal ways to get free travel, but we don't we don't teach those here. So do that. yeah, you can do this legally. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so that's that's one aspect. Now we can get into the Chase shopping portal. A lot of people don't even realize that this is there. That Chase even has a shopping portal that you can dive into. Um, but same thing when you go into your ultimate rewards there is a button for earning more points, earning bonus points. And it will take you right to their shopping portal. And you can see all kinds of nifty little deals here where it will show you, hey, normally um, for inkjets, I'm, I'm assuming printer ink there, which I need to order. You can, Normally it's it's uh, that first one, one, two, three inkjets is six points per dollar spent. It's currently at eight that's a nice little multiplier. Wow. And I love how spread. they have, yeah, some that are like it was 10. Now it's up to 12 points. So that's great yep. too. Hey, Anthony, what is that URL for that? Like what's the difference? Oh. You can just go to chase.com. Yep. Yeah. The so when you, when you go into your Chase, uh, just your Chase account, if you hit uh -huh. the ultimate rewards section, then it'll take you right there. And there's a button that says earn bonus points. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. And so you can look at all of these different ones. Obviously, this is the six plus points category, but they've got two, three, four, five, and then some that are fixed. And you can dive in here and look at all of these different options. Sam's Club, seven points for every dollar spent. Um, you know, some great options here that you can dive into. Flowers often come up on here. Where was it? Uh, FTD mm -hmm. is 10 points or 
flowersbyflorist.com, 12 points. Y'all, Valentine's Day is coming up. Just yeah. saying. Sendflowers.com, also 12 points. I know a, a lot of folks in the village also use a lot of these deals to you know send gifts and get amazing points back. Or Brooks used that for donating and buying uh, donated pet food or cat food, and then she donates it, but then gets the points for that. So you can really get clever with this. Yep. It's all about, and again, kind of like what we talked about before, that $50 rule. And you can, you can draw the line where you want to. $50 seems like a good benchmark. But anytime I'm spending $50 or more online, I'm checking here first before I do that. Gotcha. So nice. you can dive in there. Um, quick tip, like we talked about before, never, ever pay fees to use your credit card. Um, and never consider buying points until you're an advanced user. We get that question a lot, too. Um, whether it's a promo on a, on a card or with a with an airline or whatever the case is, don't even think about buying points until you're an advanced user. Even then, it's usually not a great idea. But at this stage of the game, don't even have it on your radar. How do you know if you're an advanced user? By, by our standards, means you're, you're getting at least 2,500 in free flights and hotels for every 10,000 you spend. So that 25% mark. That's a good barometer. Again, most of the time, the answer is still no anyway. It's usually not a great deal. A couple of very, very specific circumstances, but only if you're already at least at that level. Excellent. So keep it simple. Don't worry about buying points or paying fees and that kind of thing until you know how to consistently turn 50,000 points into at least $1,500, preferably more, preferably $2,500 in free travel. And so um, a couple of quick kind of FAQs before we get to uh, some questions that might be out there. Which chase card should I get? Get that all the time. The, the short answer is the chase Sapphire on your personal. Um, but there's the real answer. If you go to jgoot.com slash cards, you can see all of our card recommendations. It's either going to be the preferred or the reserve. Right. It can get really, really personal. And so again, you know, this, this group we're we're commenting on Facebook and that kind of thing. We can't get super personal with a group of 60,000 here. Um, in the lounge, like you mentioned before, uh, Mia, obviously we've got a checkpoint two with Mira, who mm -hmm. you go to for all of your credit card questions and make sure that you are getting exactly the right card for you. And but, I pop that up there too for yeah. Jake Lounge. So just text 720-706-7999 if you want a free coaching call to find out more about that. And we'll just speak on it really quickly. The lounge isn't for everyone. And we do vet people to see if it's a fit. So this is not a sales call thing. This is this is something, it needs to be something that's a fit for you and your spend and, and how you travel. Yep. Yeah, that's and you really have to have the chase card. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's that's really, a, and, and people have commented on it many times, that's really true. It's not just like this sales pitch. It's really to find out what would be best for you. And right. the majority of people, we tell we tell them that the, the lounge probably isn't the right fit. If you're just bouncing around the U.S., taking a domestic flight, you know, once annual trip to Vegas, you really don't need the lounge. And we're going to point you to some of our great free materials. Um, if if you're if you've got big travel goals, if you want to go international at least a couple of times a year, and you're looking for business class and first class, then we may have a discussion depending on where you are in this process as to whether the lounge is the right fit for you. So, but as far as which Chase card, it, some general guidance for you. If you're serious about travel, the Chase Sapphire Reserve is the way to go. Um, either Chase Sapphire is good, but the Reserve is better for travel. You will get more out of it in the long run. If that annual fee intimidates you, that's okay. Just get the preferred. And what's it's, the it's difference in the in the fees, Anthony? Yeah, so the the Reserve is five fifty. It's a little higher end card. It comes with a three hundred dollar annual travel credit right off the bat every year. So yeah. effectively it's 250 um, before you jump into anything else. But like I said, if that intimidates you, if you're new to the points game and that big number intimidates you, 
that's okay. Just get the preferred and get started. That is the single most important thing that you can do. So get your chase card if you don't have it yet. And if you've got one already, then just stick with it. Just keep using it. Yeah. What about though, Jay, you, you guys always talk about Amex. Amex has a really good sign-up bonus. Should I go ahead and get that card? And you're right. We do talk about Amex a lot because that's the other card that you're going to need to expand to. But for now, until you're getting at least that 10%, that 12% that we talked about earlier, you're earning at least three points for every dollar you spend. You know how to redeem those for three to five cents. Just focus on that. And you, I promise you'll get to expand. I promise you'll get to the big game, if you will. But you got to focus on the big six first. Excellent. So question three, should I get this insert <laughs> shiny object credit card here? You should make this a pop quiz question here for mm -hmm. absolutely no prize except not wasting your spend on the wrong kind of points. Don't do it. Yeah. Simple I love enough. this comment from Kate. Uh, great point. Yeah, the 550 fee felt a lot less scary when, uh, when that 300 travel, $300 travel credit hit. And that's just the start of it too, but that's such an, a great way to be like, okay, this is going to be your first great relief to it. So yep. thanks, Kate. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Kate. So question four, should I buy points? We talked about this earlier as well. It's a pop quiz. <laughs> All together now. <laughs> That's a hard stop. No, <laughs> do it. or no, no, not yet. Unless you're in the lounge and you can go through and get the, I mean, that's, that's a way down the road thing. Yep. There, there are just a, a very few specific scenarios where it might make sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Julie. Julie gets it. She does. Oh, <laughs> then about no. It's like the, the slow motion diving <laughs> for your hand before you click purchase. Very, very much. Don't do it. <laughs> There are, like I said, a very few scenarios where it might make sense, but 95, 99% of the time, it's a bad use of your money. You're locking yourself into a particular kind of points that aren't flexible. Um, and, and especially not knowing what kind of return you're going to get on those, you can cost yourself, again, valuable travel dollars. So Definitely. avoid that. And then lastly... My utility company charges a 3% fee to pay with a credit card. Should I put that on my chase? Don't do it. Don't do it. Very simply, it's not worth it. At 3%, no, no, no. That's three no's for the 3% that <laughs> you're paying there. It's not worth it. You're costing yourself money before. Oh, I, I like that somebody palm. admitted with a face palm, but you know what? Now you know better, you'll do better, right? Yeah. We, we've all we had all have those stories of uh, of things that we've uh. done wrong. So whether it's a uh, what was it an iPad bought with points? Mm -hmm. We or... all have that that iPad story, a little shaming. And I mentioned before we have our experts that are in the audience, and so Katie, who just coming back from our Q1 lounge getaway, uh, it's not about how much you spend, it's about consistency on your earn and how good you get at redeeming them. And that's a really great point too, because I think people do equate that of, I don't have that much money, but you do have a monthly spend. So it's really is about the consistency. Yep. Whatever, whatever your spend is, the real question is just like Katie said, how much are you getting back in free travel? How many points are you earning for every dollar you spend? And how good are you at redeeming them? What are you getting on those redemption? Yeah, Brooke. Yeah, thanks, honey. <laughs> I wasn't going to call you out, Brooke, but right. thanks for uh, thanks for owning that. When you know she better, does. you do better. Yep, so, she does. She absolutely for me, does. It was cashback. I was I was the guy juggling a dozen different cashback cards, and I knew for this for groceries, I used this one for gas. This one, it was a part time job keeping up with them, and now I do. <laughs> Look at Julie with the upbeat comment. I love that. Turn that frown upside down. You can use that iPad to look for trips. <laughs> I love it. Julie, yeah. Now I do a whole lot less work to earn a whole lot more points and get a whole lot more value out of them. Oh, God, so, I love those really kind of numbers. I like that. That's the key. So that is, uh, that's your chase card. And again, just some basic level stuff to get into to earn more points. We looked at a few of them. 
Valentine's Day is coming. I think there's still time, right? There's like two weeks till Valentine's Day. That's plenty of time wow. to order flowers. Mm -hmm. So, and I think, what did we see there? 12 X was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and several of them actually. Yep. So that's not bad. Mm -hmm. Get 12 X points and then you can turn around and use them for a, uh, for a nice little uh, trip for Valentine's Day as well. Excellent. Preach so. it. All right. So, woo, you weren't kidding. You're, you had that down. That was really that was excellent. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, we ran really long last week. And so uh, I figured wow. we'd make up for it this week. No, it's excellent. So I do have some of the comments pulled up, but quite frankly, a lot of our experts have been answering them as well, too. So uh, here's a good one. Jennifer, what if card pointers tells you to use a different card? For example, groceries, it tells me to use my Capital One. And basically for travel, I use my um, Chase Sapphire. So what do you think about that? Yeah, good question. So I'll give you two answers. Number one, you can calibrate your um, card pointers app to set the values appropriately of what you're actually getting out of them. Um, because what you get out of those points and what you'll learn to get out of those points will be very, very different. It's a lot easier to get value out of your chase points than it is capital one. Yeah. Um, number two, go back and watch what we talked about last week, Joel's presentation last week. He laid out really, really well the value of Amex, Amex versus Chase a little less, but we recommend starting there because they're easier to get value out of. And then Capital One is the next one down. You can get value out of those points. It's just a whole lot more work. Right. So I think that's what trips people up, though, Anthony, is it just it's the equation of oh, if I do this here, you know, they cut, it gets a little mixed up of what, you know, what the what the one, like you said, the work is to get it. And then what the uh, redemption multiplier is going to be, too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You got to think about both sides of that coin. Back to my my cashback example. I had a, a six percent on groceries cashback card and I don't touch that thing. I We use Instacart. So I get three X on mm -hmm. my chase sapphire uh for online purchases and i will take three chase points over six percent cash back any day of the week because i know how to take that those chase points and turn them into five or ten cents per point that's a whole lot more than six percent back brooke thanks for this so you can text your name and chase to 720-706-7999 and she'll send the training for last week oh that's great yes because we referred to it a couple times and yeah. It's a lot I'm telling you we had about an hour and a half of it, but it was a lot of good information. So take the time. It really was. It's worth every minute of it for sure. Here was a great question. Someone had asked about if they will, if it, is it safe to add their credit card numbers to uh, car pointers? And Mira, thank you for that. You actually don't add that. They're just kind of pulling the algorithm of what that card does specifically, not your credit card number. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Mira. Yeah. Amir is our oh. credit card expert. So when it comes to uh, <laughs> anything on those cards and the right cards, she knows. Yeah, Brooke, good point. Emmanuel had designed that into the app specifically, probably because he's probably dealt with a lot of, uh, you know, breach type of information. So, yeah. yeah. What about the Chase uh, five, uh, five times travel points? I'm not sure what that. What about it? Tell us what you think. Yeah, <laughs> so Chase offers 5X on the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Um, they offer 5X on travel when you book through their portal. Um, and so everybody has differing opinions on booking through the portal. You'll probably get a whole bunch of comments on it um, just from typing that question. And so it's, it's a judgment call. What you've got to know when you're booking through the Chase portal is you're booking third party. Um, and so you've got to take that into account if you're, depending on the trip you're taking, if, if something goes wrong, if the flight is canceled or delayed or there's an issue, um, the airline isn't going to help you with it. They're going to tell you, hey, you booked through Chase, go talk to them. Um, and so, like I said, you can draw that line where you want. Some people just won't book through Chase or third party at all because they don't want to deal with that risk. That's OK. Some people will do it all the way. And, and that's OK for me. Something simple and domestic where I've got a safe backup plan. I don't mind doing it. Um, something international where I don't want to get caught. I don't want to, where I may not have as strong a backup plan. I don't want to risk that. I want to book direct with the airline. That's a great pro tip too. You're right. They, they, you can sort of lower your risk by, yeah, if it's domestic and it's just a one flight, not a bunch of connecting flights. Absolutely. 
Here's yeah. another one. Jared says, is it better to book flights on my Amex Platinum or should I just worry about only using Chase first and master that? Yep. So know. Platinum is, is great. And if you're kind of the benchmark we talked about earlier, if you're already getting 10% of your spend back on Chase, then it makes sense to start expanding. But if you spread yourself too thin too quickly, it can get really overwhelming and confusing and you're not getting the most you can out of it. So we're talking about a short term focus on Chase. If you take it seriously, it can be really short term and just learn the basics of some of these multipliers that are even just in the portal and get some practice like Joel showed us how to last week, uh, looking for Hyatt redemptions where you can get three to five cents per point. If you can do both of those things, then it makes sense to start expanding and, and start using that Amex more and get into some of the trainings on that. So, but that, let that be your, that would be my encouragement. Let that be your benchmark, 10%. If you're getting 3X on your earning and 3 to 4X on your redemption, you're ready to go ahead and expand. Until then, just focus on Chase. Gotcha. All right, y'all. Well, I think the rest of our questions are probably going to be a little bit in the weeds. So we've got a lot of our experts that are out there too. Some of the like, what about this card? What about this card? Which goes back to, I think, point number two that you had. <laughs> and yep. I get it. You know what? It's hard. There's so many choices out there. And because it is the, you know, keep it simple, silly. I love it saying it that way. Uh, it's yep. really hard to, because we're, we're geared to think that things have to be more different, difficult. What's it called? Occam's razor? simplest answer right so yep. all right so on the basics it pays off in the long run and that's that's what we're here for we're here for a long time we're here for a repeatable time not for a one-off so again i think especially for today uh, just text your name and chase to 720-706-7999 and that gets you back, back to the training that joel did i always like to say things pair nicely together because i'm such a why no <laughs> that pairs nicely <laughs> <laughs> And this does too. So that's awesome. So how do we, if we, someone wants to specifically get in touch with you to um, uh, to set up a, a, a coaching call, how can we do that, Anthony? Oh yeah. Um, I can, uh, I'll go on and drop my link in the comments, uh, okay. my calendar link in there. Okay. I'll look for that comment, see if I can find it and, and comment my uh, calendar to you here. Excellent. I love it. Well, listen, uh, let's do a quick drawing for, we had a lot of comments. We had 411 comments, which is, that's wow. kind of a record for us. Absolutely. So, uh, and well done. We actually had a record number of attendees as well too. So thank you for everybody who cool. showed up. We do this every Monday. So today we, we are lucky enough to have Anthony come in and give us his info. Joel will be back, back next week. We also have lounge events. So we have happy hour just for lounge members on Wednesdays, which is like this free for all awesome Zoom call. <laughs> where we yes. all just get to throw out all of our questions as well, too. I think Armando's uh, presenting this week is uh, yes. Bora Bora trip, a detailed walkthrough of how he planned and booked that trip. And we did have have him on the here in the village about two or three weeks ago, which was yeah. a really great precursor. And then what exactly. we do in the lounge is we really break that down. So, the, you know, we don't get into the weeds here as much because there's too many people, as Anthony mentioned earlier. But in the lounge, we really yeah, get into the, the fun, um, into the making of the sausage. <laughs> right? Exactly. All right. So uh, commenter number 347, you are our lucky winner. And Brooke from above will reach out to you and uh, let you know who exactly that is because we have to count a little backwards. So I think that's it. Any last uh, parting words of wisdom for us? Uh, use your chase card. <laughs> I think that's the moral of the story. <laughs> so let's dumb it down, shall we? <laughs> use your chase card. This is a football. Exactly. <laughs> and go whatever team you like. Go. How you like up. Go sports ball. So. <laughs> Anthony, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Yes, this was excellent. And again, as soon as this ends, you can go back and watch the replay. Lots of good info information in there. We'll see you all next week. And as Joel says, happy travels. Happy travels. Bye, everyone. <laughs>